Coming up next, a suspect in the murder of an 87-year-old man in Scripps Ranch appears in court. Your private messages on Facebook about your health are not really private. What county supervisors are doing to protect them? It's a small tool having a huge impact. We'll show you the latest jaws of life being used by San Diego Fire Rescue. It's been one year since the U.S. pulled out of Afghanistan, but many in our community continue to help Afghan families. Jaguar reclaiming their habitat along the Mexico-Arizona border. And the special education instructor who hopes her new scented pencils will be the right answer for your student. CBS 8 News Live at 6 starts now. A not guilty plea today from a man accused of murdering an 87 year old retired doctor in Scripps Ranch. Good evening and thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Carlo Chiquetto. I'm Marcella Lee. The victim, William Dagnan, was found in his backyard at the bottom of a partially empty swimming pool. CBS 8's David Gothardson was in court today for the suspected killer's first appearance. Mr. Smith, your not guilty plea and denial are entered. The public defender is appointed. Jeffrey Smith pleaded not guilty to first degree murder and two counts of violating a restraining order in the death of retired Dr. William Deenan. Police say the 87 year old victim was found by a family member on August 2nd at the bottom of a swimming pool in the backyard of Deenan's Scripps Ranch home on Birch Glen Court. Officers at the scene saw evidence that caused them to believe the death was suspicious but no cause of death was announced by the prosecutor in court. This is a very tragic situation. Um, obviously, we're, we feel for the victim and the victim's family right now. The victim had obtained a restraining order against Smith on July 7th, telling the judge he was afraid of Smith and experienced fear of physical harm, verbal abuse, intimidation, mental suffering, and threats of taking the house. The victim had obtained a protective order in this case. Um, the defendant was found in the home um, subsequent of the homicide, and so that would be one of the violations of the protective order. I pulled the restraining order and found that it also included a move out order, so it looks like Smith was living on the property with the victim. In court, the public defender also said Smith is a veteran and the date of the murder, August 2nd, was also the 60th birthday of the alleged killer. The prosecutor said she was comforted by the fact that the judge ordered Smith to be held without bail. Based on the court's ruling today of remaining no bail status, we know he'll remain in custody and that does give us some alleviation. If convicted, Smith is facing 25 years to life in prison. He'll be back in court one week from today. At the downtown courthouse, David Goffertson, CBS 8. Thank you, David. A woman is in custody on murder charges tonight connected to a fatal stabbing in National City. Just before 4 this morning, a 911 call sent National City officers to 26th Street, just east of National City Boulevard, where they found a man who had been stabbed, mortally wounded. He has not yet been identified. Samantha June Gordon, a Spring Valley resident, was arrested a short time later. A CBS 8 follow up tonight, and it's good news for people living in Tierra Santa. Earlier today, the city of San Diego lifted a boil water notice that affected about 600 customers. We're told the latest tests show no issues with the tap water there tonight. After a major transmission line broke on August 6th near University City, uh, that triggered the problems. That pipeline is expected to be fully back in service this week. Hours ago, the teenager accused of kidnapping and trying to rape a 16 year old girl made his first appearance in juvenile court. The attack happened in July in Lincoln Acres and the suspect was arrested last week. Police did release some surveillance video in the area. We spoke with his family after the proceeding and they say they support him 100%. He's a good boy. And we're just moving forward with this and to get the situation addressed. Since this case involves two juveniles, the information we have is limited, but we do know the alleged victim says the suspect tackled her. She says she escaped once, but then says he tackled her to the ground again and tried to rape her. Someone walking by heard the commotion, stepped in, intervened and stopped it. The suspect ran away. He is in juvenile custody and will likely not be going to adult court. Tonight, the U.S. government is still asking Americans to reconsider traveling to Tijuana and other border cities for the time being. That comes after a weekend of violence in TJ. 
Mexican officials say drug cartels are responsible for the mayhem. Drug gangs known as narcos set fire to at least 15 vehicles blocking multiple roads over the weekend. Hundreds of Mexican National Guard troops were then sent to Baja, California to try and restore peace. Eight people are now in custody. A new Jaws of Life tool is coming in handy for firefighters. It allows them to perform vehicle extractions more quickly. CBS 8's Brian White saw the new LightWave tool today, and as San Diego Fire Rescue crews demonstrated how quickly they can open a car with it. San Diego Fire Rescue demonstrating their new Jaws of Life extrication tool. These are battery operated extrication tools that we're using that are very powerful and do the job very fast and we can get them in deployment rapidly. Engine Company 35 did a side by side demonstration of their new battery operated Genesis tool and the older one it's replacing. The older equipment uses a gasoline engine in these hydraulic hoses, much more involved than a simple battery on the new one. With technology, these batteries are much more powerful, longer lasting. The new Genesis tool had the first car door off in about two minutes, much faster than the old model. In the time that uh, it took us to set up the old uh, tool, the Homaltro tool, uh, we were able to already have the Genesis uh, opening up the door and pretty much having the door all the way off, uh, just in the amount of time that it took to get the old tool up and running. These tools play a vital role for firefighters when rescuing people trapped in cars after an accident, when timing can make all the difference. Our craft is very much about time and getting something very quick so we can get that patient out of there safely quickly and then to the hospital where they need where they belong this newer lightweight model is very portable and can be carried anywhere without all the extra gear required for the older model over the past year the san diego fire rescue foundation has donated a number of these genesis tools and now with their help every fire rig across the city is now outfitted with one these unmet needs are, are something out of our budget that we cannot afford to buy. So the Fire Rescue Foundation we've had a long time partnership with and they, they go get those donations that we need for these very important items. Wendy Robinson, executive director of the San Diego Fire Rescue Foundation, is happy they can provide this type of equipment that is so essential for public safety. The city budget only goes so far and when we can come together as a community and provide these enhanced resources, it makes our entire region stronger. At the San Diego Fire Rescue Training Facility, I'm Brian White for CBS 8. Lighter means faster and every second counts. It's been a year since the fall of Kabul when the U.S. military pulled its troops out of Afghanistan. Today, the State Department was pressed about broken promises from the Taliban, including not allowing girls to go to school. CBS 8's Abby Alford shares how a San Diego native and others are going to extreme measures to give young women and children an education. Resettlement agencies like Jewish Family Service help Afghan families relocate and thrive here in San Diego. In the last year, we've seen many people in our community helping those families here and in Afghanistan. I don't know what I got myself into. Exactly one year ago today, Aria Raofi recorded this terrifying plea. She tried to escape the Taliban. She dodged gunfire and witnessed people shot next to families and their children. I think honestly it's so surreal that it's already been one almost a year. Aria grew up in Rancho Bernardo and was in Afghanistan where she started a children's photography school. She was able to flee and now lives in Florida where we spoke to her over Zoom. You would be so surprised like how badly these little girls want education. Just a simple school. Aria says the school had to shut down, but they fought to reopen it. Nearly 100 girls and four teachers go to school in these hidden containers. <coughs> the Taliban still have not lived up to their promise of allowing girls access to education. It's as simple as education, but yet you're breaking generation cycles of suffering and poverty. Still shaken and afraid, Aria has not been able to revisit Afghanistan. She says the guilt weighs on her. One of her students was forced into what she calls child marriage because the girl's parents did not have money for food. I still feel like there's something I could do that I should do and I must do. As she struggles emotionally, Aria says financially she needs help to keep the school open, so she launched a GoFundMe. I want to be heard so I could raise awareness and possibly have somebody to support me in helping those little girls. This is the only place where they have some kind of hope. 
Aria says she may have left the war and torn country, but she will not leave young women like her behind. It's my obligation and duty to, you know, continue raising awareness and give them a voice. To help little girls go to school in Afghanistan, go to CBS8.com and click on the help button. All right, Abby, thank you. Since the U.S. withdrew troops from Afghanistan, 100,000 Afghans have fled their home country and more than half have resettled here in America. Jewish Family Service of San Diego's refugee resettlement team says it has welcomed 423 people from Afghanistan since last August. They are one of four designated agencies in the county who provide assistance to help families relocate.